Alrighty, okay, as the title suggests, this is all about mazes and bots and bots that can solve mazes. But it's not any ordinary maze or any ro ordinary robot. I sent myself a really hard challenge this time, something very specific, uh, just to test my robotic skills and getting ready for the arena wars. Okay, so here's the thing. This little guy here, right, it's a very precisely built machine, this one, very, very precise. It's got to make its way all the way through the maze and then get to that tall tower here, yeah? Now when it gets to the tall tower, what it's got to do is it's got to pick it up and then complete the rest of the maze and then bring the big lump of wood back exactly to where it started again. And that was the big challenge, to see how we could do that. Okay, so this is the first complete run. We've started here already, so our way, we'll do a couple of cutaways, speed it up a bit. It was recorded very slow. Uh, yeah, I mean, the actual robot runs very slow because I wanted it to be as precise as possible. So uh, what I did was I put the wheels down to 0.1 of a of a, a normal wheel. No, sorry, 10%. Uh, they're running at 10%. Uh, yeah, 10% because the slower you go, the more precise you can control it. And I'm using, as you can see, ordinary cartwheels without bumps on them. But um, it all worked out really well because once you put the instructions in and get it started, it's very smooth running. Now, that block that you see there, the green block, that's the terminal block. That's the one that switches the bot off and tells it to drop the drop the log. But as you can see, it's actually still in the, the thing there, so it sends it into a little, um, a little loop, making it look as if it was praying to the log. Um, okay, here's what the sensor's on. How it works is the two lower cubes um, are obstacle avoidance. They'll just keep, they just tuck, nudge and nudge and nudge and nudge and nudge. But the, the two higher cubes, they have for a hard right turn. So the both sets of cubes do the same thing. They turn the, turn the machine away, but one turns it in specific direction and the other one is just obstacle avoidance. And they, run, they work in different ways. And the big sphere one in the middle is for picking up the wood, because as soon as it senses the wood in front of it, it drops its grabbers charges forward, picks them up, slings it over its shoulder and away it goes. We'll speed it up here so that you can um, see it better. Yeah, you can see the little ones just going all the way around. So key to all of this is those logs that are on the second level, like one level up from all the rest of them. They are the ones that instruct the robot to uh, make a turn. So basically what you could do is you can mess about, you can make all sorts of mazes for this thing and just use all the different keys. You could even automate those, those um, second level blocks with um, with like flippers or whatever, so that you can, <laughs> that was it, he got a bit pissed off that time, threw his dummy out of pram. I uh, don't know what went wrong there. Anyway, what I was saying was, you could make a, a proactive maze that would react in different ways, or you could set it up in different ways that would make the robot do different things each time. Um, I'm gonna, do that in my next video and I'm probably going to do that on the live stream, next besieged live stream one which will be soon. So I've got some plans for that. The other thing that was good about this was um, was the camera angles. The camera angles are just amazing because I just love these cameras. When you're making videos they are just a godsend, they're just fantastic. Check it out man, that looks really cool. Really like that. So yeah, um, I would say this is a success. This way it's went really well. There's quite a few besieged builders have tried making mazes and some of them have worked really well altogether. But um, what my next plan is for the actual bot itself is to try and make it complete a maze quicker and even more accurately and maybe carry out even more complex tasks. So we'll see where that goes. But uh, meanwhile, we'll just um, show you one more time these sensors working at a slower pace in case you're wanting to try and do something yourself. And you can see the, the lower ones just keeping it on apart. The lower ones were really key to getting it um, narrowed down so that it could pick up that, that log. Because you'll notice that the, the passageway, I made the passageway tighter so that it, would, it just couldn't miss the thing. It had to pick it up every time. But it took a long time to get that maze um, tweaked. Once I, had, once I had the cart done, the actual cart itself, the actual bot itself, I didn't tweak it anymore, I just kept tweaking the maze to suit the robot, yeah? Not the other way about. Um, you would normally expect that would be, in real life you would expect it to be, if you're designing a robot, you wouldn't change the world for the robot's sake, you would uh, make the robot change, but for this one, no. This is quite good. The one time he actually missed the terminal block and um, he just went all the way around with the thing on his shoulder again, so that's quite plucky. Gave me some good angles as well. 
So, anyway, I think that's about it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you're interested in doing any maze challenges or anything like that. Uh, I think we should try and develop that a little bit. It's, um, it's ideal. Okay, catch you later. Bye.